Hello from the Philippines and welcome to Manila, the capital. Now I'm here outside Dirisoro Market. Hey guys, to try and get an understanding of the city's culture because often the best place to come when you want to get a feel for a city and for a place's culture is where the food and the people are at, the local people. Now, there's of course a very long history relating to the Spanish history and hence a lot of the names of the cities still sound Spanish and it was in fact King Philip II of Spain who back in the 16th century along with the conquistadors first came over to the land of Manila and then ultimately changed the name to Las Filipinas so let's see if we can head into the market now and find anything Spanish beyond the names so apparently this place, Manila and the Philippines, has the highest population of Spanish speakers in all of Asia. But my exaggerations aside, it's actually less than 1% of the population. So let's see in Divisoria Mall if we can find a little bit of Spanish history. So let's go. All right, so I made it into the mall. Apparently, this is the biggest in all of the Philippines. So I've come to the Harrods of Manila. So what do we have? We've got some stuffed toys. If you're into Jurassic Park or maybe the Lion King, this will be the place to come. We've got more wild animals and fruits up here. Everything for children to educate them about nourishment, wild animals, jungle survival. Hello, my friend. It's so busy in here. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Everybody's so lovely and friendly. It makes uh, a big difference feeling the warmth compared to the colder climes of Eastern Europe that I've been in. We've got some uh, sporting jerseys up here. Sorry. The LA Lakers with my name on. King James. And what do we have? It looks like uh, homewares and things around here. And so far. Hello. Hello. So far, I'm yet to see any Real Madrid or Barcelona tops. So as yet, there's nothing, uh, nothing Spanish around here. We've seen LA Lakers and other American teams, but nothing Spanish as yet. Hey man. Hey man, I like your t-shirt. Cool dude. Like Andrew Tate in the Prada, <laughs> the pink Prada. <laughs> Okay, we've got more sneakers and stuff in here. These are really good. You've got everything you need in every colour. I'm not sure uh, what the name is. It Patagonia's? I think they may be Argentinian <laughs> rather than Spanish. I can't think of... Uh, oh, Balenciagas, of course. Hello, sir. Balenciagas are the Spanish ones. I've yet to see those. And I have, for reference, since sold mine. <laughs> After my... Uh, my backpacking days in the Balenciagas through Lahemar Park. It looks as though we've reached the other side of the mall. I'm not entirely sure. Let's see if we can head upstairs. But I'm necessarily going to find anything Spanish here. But let's not give up hope or abandon hope just yet. Hey guys. <laughs> Everybody's so friendly. The energy feels good in the Philippines and in Asia in general since I've been here. This is only my second day after uh, Singapore. But yeah, I'm feeling the vibe. Hi guys. Woo, shy. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> the girls are shy. <laughs> so, <laughs> people are friendly and a little bit shy. Aha. Look, we've got more Lakers, more American teams. But no, no Spanish hi. is it. Hey guys. I'd like to say hi. Hello. You're on YouTube guys. Yeah. Hello. Okay, more bits and bobs here. I could actually do with getting some slides for later in the trip. So I'm going to be uh, beach bound at certain points. It's a hard life, eh? I'll be sharing that with you, of course. Some of the adventures. We've got the latest fashions here. All up on there. But yeah, so far, I'm yet to see any camisetas. If that's the right word, let's <laughs> dress Hi, I think. Sir. Hello. Yes, I'm my friend. Hello, hello. Hey guys, we've got jeans, all of the great denim. 
I, I'm not sure what the uh, what the Spanish denim brand is. Diesel is Spanish, is it not? I think I wear a lot of their jeans. No more though. Now I'm in uh, Asia. I'm cooling off, enjoying the shorts. I think we're going to head down now. We'll head back down because I think it's a lot of uh, housewares and clothes and stuff here. So, as we have yet to find an answer to explain why or where the Spanish influence remains here in Manila, I think it's about time that we head a little bit further downtown towards some of the parks and also the fort of Intramuros which was built by the Spanish and we can hopefully understand a bit more of the history from there. Wow, what a wonderful array of colourful helmets. So cool. All right, I'm getting distracted. Let's go. Hi. All right guys, so back outside. Let's see if we can hop in a tuk-tuk or the equivalent, one of these bikes. Might have to put the camera away for a moment while we try and navigate. We'll get down to the fort, Fort Santiago. See if we can't find ourselves a mode of transportation to get through these streets. All right guys, so I've popped to my first photo taxi. Wow, the streets are crazy. We're gonna go down, hey friend. We're gonna go down to Fort Santiago now in Intramuros. Find out a little bit more about the history. Friend, what is your name? Marcos. Marcos. My Jane. I'm James. Marcos is a cool name. Spanish? No. Filipino. Filipino, for sure. For sure. I want to understand the history. But Marcos, you have a handsome name for a handsome man. <laughs> you have all the looks. You're like Philippines movie star. <laughs> Very cool. Wow, this is the first time I've been on anything like this. Woo! Now that I'm arriving in Asia. Such fun. The taxi drivers did say that I needed to be kept with the camera. Because people do often tend to grab things. Well, some people grab things on, on uh, scooters as they go past. Just like any other city, it happens in London. On the level of crime and targeting things like Rolex watches. And mobile phones. But yeah, you just have to be a little bit more aware. So cool. Look at the streets here. Hello, friend. Woo! We got somebody asleep in there. He's trying to find some shade in the midday heat. Wow. So on the way here, I tried to walk as far as I could after having got the metro downtown. But, I really underestimated the streets. Here it's not so bad near the markets. It's really busy. Really busy. Hello. But the pavements downtown don't really exist. You've got wires, potholes, and the roads are crazy. It's not that easy to walk places, and I love walking everywhere when I can to get a feel for the place that I'm in. However, I think rather than taking my life into my own hands again, and for a bit of fun, this is definitely the best way to roll. Down here. Aha, we need to get gas. Woo! It's a big curve. Hey man! We get gas? Okay. We need to stop and get some gas. It might be my ever-increasing waistline that's weighing down the car and ruining the uh, fuel efficiency. <laughs> Yamaha, nice. Very cool. Let's stop and get some gas on the way. Okay, so how, how close can we go? 
How close to get to Fort? Fort Santiago, this way. Yeah, uh, how long? Uh, corner fire station, turn to the right. Uh, it's safe to walk, yeah. it's okay? It's okay. Okay, is it 200? You give me a little bit back. Okay, now. A little bit back? Sir, uh, but you want a uh, camisa, I call. I do what? Uh, but you want Kalisa and I call. You, Kalisa. I what? Kalisa. Horse. You need Kalisa. Horse. Oh, horse. horse. You give me some back? No. no, you charge me the same to go less? That doesn't seem very fair. It seems like I've lost out here. Here, here, here. There, here. This. Okay. <laughs> All right. You're on YouTube. <laughs> okay. Hey. All right, so Any I gotta walk down here. Yes, sir. Back on here, fire station. Turn to the right. Okay, really bad. So not too long. Two minutes? Yes, sir. It's like two uh, minutes? Five minutes? Four minutes. Ah, okay. That's okay. This street. Thank you. All right, that's not so bad. That's not so bad. I, I thought I was gonna have a long walk on my hands. However, the driver charged me the same. It's not the end of the world though, I guess people here don't earn a great deal. I could do with a little walk anyway. Hello! Okay, I found the fire station. So he wasn't lying to me. Apparently it should be just down this road. But you can see already, the buildings have changed dramatically compared to where we were earlier by the market. Things feel so much more expansive and open here and clean in comparison to uh, to the madness of the market. That was really something else. It's all opened up and it does feel already a bit more Spanish or Latino inspired. Look at this. This is a Caballero. A pretty pony. Everything feels different. You finally feel as though you've got some oxygen or some air. Being in the shade being around the trees and away from a lot of that pollution and madness going down the streets. So, I'll get my wallet out and pay. Senior citizen, lots of grey hair. <laughs> I, will, uh, I will pay, I will pay 75. It's free today until 2 p.m. Oh, oh really? Oh, fantastic, thank you very much. I think it's your birthday today. Uh, yeah, I'm doing YouTube, so it's good to share. Pack it? Very smart. This is Hackett. That is so smart. I like Hackett. Hackett suits. Very nice. Hey man. No, thank you though. Have a good day. Oh, well that was kind. So apparently, it's free in until 2 p.m. Ooh, the dungeons are open. Excellent. I might get thrown in the dungeon. <laughs> if I've been a good boy, or if I've not been a good boy. Let's take a look around here. It's quite uh, jarring to see the high-rises, which I'll show you in a minute in the background, when you're amidst these trees. I really don't know what the name of them is. They've got those waxy leaves. But you certainly feel a million miles away from the west, that's for sure. Hey, guys. Hello. Hey. Hello. Going to be on YouTube? <laughs> What's your YouTube? Invested Adventure. Do you have phone? Yes. I'll show you QR. But I don't have uh, no, no signal. No oh, yes. From Philippines? Yeah. Manila? Yeah. Yes. Let's see if I can do. No data, you scan this one. QR? We no? We just QR. get photo together anyway. <laughs> I'm James from England. Hello. Hello. Hey guys, nice to meet you. What were your names? General. General? Yeah. Clarko. Clarko? <laughs> Clarko, no? Clark. Clark, like Clark Kent, Superman. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Superman. Katniss. Katniss. Ayesha. 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 Ayesha, like Ayesha. Ayesha, okay, and your name? Jerome. Jerome, cool. Lovely to meet you guys. Bye-bye. Thank you for having me in your country. Thank you. Ah, lovely people. So in the 16th century, as the old conquistadores came across the water, they basically were after a piece of the action when it came to Manila, 
generally more broadly the Philippines influences a trading hub and as the Spanish came over an old King Philip II got the islands of Semya and I think Maynila named after him and ultimately the country Las Filipinas they took over the city and colonized it and they did so by two methods one of which I mentioned over there being the cannon but the other hey the other being Catholicism what's your YouTube channel? it's James do you want to write down? wait let me wait my okay okay we we wait here you want to be in with me yeah. and I'll explain okay so they took took hold of the city do you want to hold it no no it's not your blog okay they took hold of the city by the canon and Catholicism so like a lot of places that we've been to in the world can you it's tell ultimately your religion YouTube channel? that helps to rule things yeah can you do you want to scan have a YouTube, I, we, okay we, have, we don't have scanners. let me let me write do you want me to write the name in there for later in notes yes please okay let's do this you will be able to hear me talk about the history we'll, we'll be, we will be in your blog yeah for sure Hi. do you want me to write the name sure you can look you guys can hold it for a minute while i write the name you're in control now it's your blog okay so the channel <laughs> is here okay take care guys what do you like are you studying at school yes, yes. What, what's your favorite subject english english oh well from an englishman that's good and yours english too and what do you want to be when you're older do you want to soldier. work in manila you want to be a soldier here police. soldier and police yeah. wow okay guys well that's brilliant that's brilliant i will be sure to remember you and put the video on youtube and I'll look out for you in the walled city of Fort Santiago, the future military officer and chief of police. <laughs> All right, guys. Okay, bye -bye. See you later. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. So that was lovely and friendly. I'm not sure how much of that we caught before, but as I was saying, with the walls behind me in the walled city. It was by canon and Catholicism that ultimately the Spanish colonized in the 16th century, the Philippines and Manila in particular. And hence, as I said earlier, they have all of the Spanish names or Spanish sounding cities even to this day. Now I've found the dungeons. Hopefully I'm not gonna be uh, imprisoned within them. Check this out, such a small entrance. Oh, I have to take my uh, shades off to get through here. Get the squat on, look at that flexibility. Wow. Now within these thick walls, there have been thousands of prisoners over the years detained in here. You can see in these statues some of the conditions that they may have been kept in, in rags, injured, presumably through torture. And there was one inmate in particular who's worth remembering above all else or all others for the Filipino people. And that's the national hero, Dr. Jose Rizal. A little bit later on, we'll be seeing or exploring a bit more of his role in Manila's history. I think we should head a bit further downtown now, outside of the fort's walls. 
and see whether we can discover a bit more Spanish history and get a better feel for what shaped the Philippines and the people of Manila. Yeah, the, uh, the feel of this place, or this particular area, really is cool. Outside one of the big hotels now, but I believe that this is the cathedral, which would make sense. Given the Spanish influence that we saw with the fort, the next, or the first thing that they're going to build closest to that, when trying to instill Catholicism on the people, is likely to be a cathedral. You can see here, that must be Mary, and then a memorial or a plaque for Il Papa, or the Pope, John Paul II. Very good, I won't go in with the camera. For now, so I want to get further down see what else we can explore. But indeed, this is the cathedral and a further sign of the Spanish influence here. Aha! But this is what I was looking for. Casa Manila. Apparently meant to replicate what a Spanish colonial mansion would have looked like back in those times. Okay, here's the entrance. Or oh, is this just for treats? Cold treats. I think maybe this is the bar. Let's see if we can get through. Hello. Is the entrance? Maybe I've just walked into a cafe. Oh no, I'm here. Wow. Check this out. So the mystery behind this place is that this is actually isn't original all of this or at least as far as I'm aware the interior was actually constructed in the 1980s like me so not that long ago but it should give you an impression and an idea of the opulence that the Spanish brought with their rule to Manila and indeed how some of the Filipino aristocracy if you want to call them that the people who legged up with the Spanish gives you an idea of how they might have lived I think we need to try and get upstairs this way and it might indeed be ticketed but let's see if we can get in anyway see some of this opulence entrance I'm all over the place here it's very very hot and humid entrance exit entrance okay now we're talking hello dear how much is it to enter 75, 75. okay one moment oh okay I need to go this way yes admission ticket okay I go and get ticket thank you wow Check it out guys, so opulent. Apparently, I'm not allowed to film in here, so it might be short-lived. You can see some of the decorations and furniture here. Quite incredible. Very beautiful. This would have been the opulence and power of the Spanish. And later, the Filipino elite. Is this the dining room? The red carpet ends. So I can't cross more. What beautiful fresco on the ceiling. And chandelier as well. And those windows, amazing. Uh, no video allowed, picture okay. only. No video, unfortunately. YouTube, no more history. But this place is built in 1980. So, it's a replica anyway. We best get out of here, so I don't want to upset any more locals. Let's go. Alright guys, so getting booted out, not quite booted, but having upset the uh, 
the locals by trying to film. Loads of other people were there, as you probably saw, with even bloody iPads out, not being asked to move on. All I'm trying to do is show you a little bit of history and explain this wonderful country. But anyways, we need to get out of here. But the point that I wanted to make, having shown you some of the opulence inside, is how ultimately all of this was a facade. And there were actually some parallels there, some similarities with ultimately how the Filipinos felt towards the apparent introduction or um, goodness, the apparent goodness that the Spanish brought to the Philippines. It wasn't all mansions and roses, chandeliers. In fact, there's quite a lot of growing or growing dissent amongst the Filipinos who ultimately wanted their independence back. Not surprisingly, after so many years of colonization. We go now? Okay, okay. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. It's crazy downtown. We're gonna get a break in the traffic here. Yeah, no, stop, stop. no, no. Stop off. Okay, okay. Here we go. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Okay, let's try and find a way into this park. It's gated there. Maybe there's an entrance down here. This is what I've been looking for. Now, whilst the Spanish occupation did bring its positives in terms of the introduction of faith, education and governance, there was also undoubtedly some discontent amongst the Filipino people, which was bubbling up. And a lot of that was led by the abuse of power and corruption from the high-ranking officials who were ultimately Spanish, of course. And what they imposed on the local Filipino people was things like forced labor and exceptionally high taxes, which kept people ultimately under control. And don't forget that the cultural identity was also suppressed with the introduction of Catholicism and other rituals and beliefs of the Spaniards. So as things began to bubble up, the Filipinos were in need of a hero. And a man by the name of Dr. Jose Rizal, who this park is named after, was just the man to lead the revolution. Now, Dr. Jose Rizal, as his title might suggest, was in fact an academic and a scholar. And he was known for not only his mathematic ability, but also his skills as a writer. But what he believed in, above all else, was education, rather than rebellion and revolution. So standing up through his literature, against the Spanish colonial rule, it began to be noticed by the Spanish authorities, at least as operating in the Philippines. And it wasn't long before he was arrested and detained for a period of time in Fort Santiago, as we saw in those dungeons. But unfortunately, it took his death and in fact execution to spark the revolution. Whereas a very popular person in Manila and the Philippines more broadly, had inspired the people to revolt. And at just 35 years of age, Jose Rizal, having been detained and imprisoned in that dungeon in Fort Santiago for a period of time, 
then faced execution on this very spot by a firing squad. Now, having highlighted the abuses of the Spanish colonizers and reinstilled that sense of Filipino pride and national identity, this, which is in fact the largest urban park in Asia, is dedicated in his honor. And where we're gonna to head to now to finish off is the monument that stands in his honor. music event just at the end of the park over there which I can't do much about I'm afraid but here is where the monument built out of bronze and granite stands as a testament to Dr. Jose Rizal's martyrdom and in him fighting for the freedom from the Spanish colonizers and for the liberation of the Filipinos. But the unusual thing about the statue, which quite rightly is a very popular tourist spot, is that not only is it constantly guarded around the clock with armed guards, as you can see there, but it was also unusually meant to be facing in the opposite direction. Now the direction it's facing in is actually west towards the bay and the idea was that it would be facing the sun as indeed it is. However, in building the monument of Rizal facing in that direction, he in fact has his back to the city side of Manila that he fought so hard and ultimately lost his life to represent. So what began in the market has ended here in Rizal Park. And we did indeed find some Spanish history along the way albeit not quite the football shirts that I was looking for originally. But we found a lot more than that, something that runs much deeper in the history of Manila and the Filipino people. So I'm gonna to head to the other end of the park now, see if I can't hitch a ride in the direction of my hostel, and try and get in the shade to cool down a bit, have a nice shower, maybe grab a beer. So a new day awaits tomorrow, exploring this time the Japanese influence in the post-war era over this amazing country.